Hello, welcome to Webinar Wednesday. My name is Mikko Maninen. I'm ArcFlash product manager at Arctech Relays. Today, uh, I will tell you about uh, our latest AQ100 series member, AQ103, and also its connect connectivity to our S254 or any other Modbus master system. Welcome to listen webinar and uh, hope you enjoy it. First uh, introduction uh, to the AQ103 product lines. There are two product lines. Uh, one, of, one of them is uh, for the MV, medium voltage applications, and one of them it is designed for the low voltage applications. There are not much difference, but the low voltage application, it is designed for the easy low voltage applications like um, one main incomer, main tie main, and uh, main main applications. And uh, then this uh, medium voltage version, AQ103, is designed for the more complex uh, applications and also there is a full feeder selectivity, up to four feeders each relay, and then full feeder selectivity also with the master trip. And uh, that is a that is the uh, uh, rough dividers uh, of the of the two different uh, platforms. So this AQ103 medium voltage belongs to the well-proven AQ100 series, and it's one newest member of that family. The other units there are there are 110P, 110F, uh, different uh, current modules with the fiber or point sensors, and then there are different type of uh, thin rail and flush mounted uh, point sensor and fiber sensor modules, and uh, also, since uh, November, Arctech as a sole partner for Siemens, also this uh, Siemens AQD uh, sequence, AQD, which, uh, which operates together with uh, AQ100 series products. Medium voltages and then another platform, AQ0, AQ, AQ100 series for the low voltage applications. And not to mention from here, um, very similar uh, setup, uh, current uh, with fiber point sensors and uh, DIN rail mounted, flush mounted, and of course well-known AQ1000 arc quenching unit. Only one, only resettable quenching unit in the market. Uh, one, one uh, thing to mention here is that the AQ103 do have 14 individual sensors. We can mount point sensors, 14 point sensors, and we can, we can know the exact location where the fault occurred. This is important new feature and uh, and we can, we can, of course, with the Modbus communication, we can send that information, we can use that information and send that forward to the upstream systems. Point sensors, our standard point sensor, AQ1, AQ01, up to 200 meter lines, definitely enough to most applications. Uh, typical applications are uh, about 10 to 20 meters, sometimes less than 10 meters, and um, and 200 meters is definitely enough, even the most uh, difficult applications. For example, for example, uh, it has been used uh, long distances has been used, for example, in hydro plants where the generator is very far, far away, and uh, this uh, long distance to the relay itself can help. To, to provide application also for that. 
and another type of sensor, pressure and light sensor. And uh, this one is a, a very nice uh, uh, type of sensor. It is a identical light sensor than AQ01, with exception that this has double criteria. And double criteria means that uh, sometimes we use light only applications, sometimes we use current and light applications. And uh, there are locations that this current sensing is not possible. And in those cases, you can use pressure sensor as a double criteria. Fiber sensors, all fiber sensors always are loop sensors up to 40, actually sometimes AQ07 even to 50 meters. And uh, yeah, very good to use, for example, low voltage bus bars. Sometimes low voltage uh, feeders. Uh, sometimes in medium voltage when, <clears throat> when we are talking about metal enclosed switch gears. And uh, metal enclosed, when the bus bar is open, this can be used, for example, in the bus bar compartment. And it's very easy, easy also in uh, retrofit uh, applications, retrofit projects. A few words about the simplicity of this new AQ103. Few tips and, and good to know, know uh, every unit has own power supply. That actually increases the scalability of the system. When you don't need to think about that is there enough power to supply big systems, don't worry, there is. This has a own power supply, you can have a multiple big massive systems and that they will supply enough, enough power for each unit. Uh, power, two different types, small and big power supply, small one is DC only, up to 72 volts DC, and the big one is uh, then AC-DC power supply, up to 265. Unit can be used uh, also as a standalone or big system, and it's very, very easy to commission. Yeah, installation method is well known. Uh, it is, uh, uh, the chassis size is same than AQ110 unit, which is our current, current monitoring unit. And, uh, and uh, this can be also equipped with the IP54 front ceiling. Front seal. Uh, configuration. According to designs, we can select and use these uh, dip switches here. We have two types. We have Modbus and if we have without Modbus, we only have one switch group here, switch group one. And if Modbus, then we have also this one. And according to designs, set these uh, switches, install all the sensors, and then push this button for the three seconds, and then we are good to go. It's ready. Like here uh, mentioned uh, that we we have a spe uh, we have a standard address for the Modbus. Uh, we have a standard address uh, 20 always. And then with the dip switches we can add plus 1, plus 2, plus 4, plus 8, depending of the dip switch uh, selected. And so on we can have addresses from 20 to 35. I will tell more about that later. And then uh, Let's functions to trip outputs and high speed output and uh, blocking function always all, also available in the dip switches. 
But the main thing is that uh, very easy to commissioning, dip switches and set button, and it's fully supervised. About the scalability, uh, very simple, very, very easy application here. One low voltage panel, one main incomer, few sensors. I, I would say that this only takes like a few minutes to do all the settings. Uh, maybe a few minutes with the coffee break. So, so uh, very easy, uh, straightforward, two trip lines, T1, T2, upstream breaker and, and, and the main breaker. And uh, whenever you connect the sensor, when you add sensor, when you remove sensor, you can press the set button three seconds and it auto configurate itself. Scalability, this is a very simple one. And then here is another example with a bigger system. This is a feeder selective main time main feeder selective medium voltage system. And uh, just an example, you can imagine how big board we are talking about if we add 16 units, then it's a massive 64 feeders. And of course can be connected with the Modbus. A few facts, uh, fully supervised, full feeder selective to four feeders. And uh, that's the uh, best, uh, best in the market. So far I know, uh, full feeder selective for the one unit, four feeders. And then when we add these 16, it is already up to 64 feeders, which is massive. And that's one system. We can do parallel systems and, and send the communication between the units. That's no problem. So depending of the, depending of the location, depending of the plant, I would say that almost everything is doable. Just uh, if, if, if you are facing a very complex one, uh, you can always contact our technical support. More about the connectivity. I al already mentioned a few words, but the more about connectivity. Uh, maximum 16 relays uh, for the one system. Starting addresses from 20 up to 35. And the last one in line, you should add resistor at the end of the line. And the terminate, termination resistor is always with the unit. So just connect plus and minus parallel to that resistor and then, then it's uh, fine. Max one kilometer which is, uh, it's, it's supposed to be good enough and uh, can be connected to S254, Modbus Master. Uh, 14 individual sensors, for example, these point sensors here. And uh, up to 200 meter line, L little bit, uh, uh, I say, Few few times, uh, but uh, good to remind good to remind that uh, 14 sensors, individual sensors. If we lose one of the sensor because of the a cable cut or anything, uh, then we will get an alarm, and we can forward that alarm to the systems. A binary input always current input. If we have a current monitoring unit, we can we can send the signal to this binary input one. Binary input two, light input or master trip. We can uh, send light information output uh, with the wetted 24 volts internal supply. And with the low voltage systems, we can also use high speed output as a solid, st solid state trip output for low voltage circuit breakers. And of course, uh, manuals from website and uh, if something, uh, something uh, more is needed, feel free to contact Arctic. A couple of application examples here. Low voltage, one main breaker, light only, 
application. Very simple, very easy. Uh, in this case, the right hand side 103, if there is any light signal, any of the sensors active, it will send the signal to the left side, AQ103, which will make the trip output active to T1 and T2. Quite small application, very standard application. And uh, here is another one with the current and light and also with the AQ1000 arc quenching unit. Also very standard application. These red dots here are closed breakers. And just to give an idea, if there is a flash, for example, there on one of the feeders, then we will open these two breakers. And another one, AQ103 application, which is a feeder selective, Modbus connected to the S254 and upstream system. Then uh, feeder selective means if you have all these breakers closed. Let's say that this is normal daily operation of the plant. One of the cable explodes because of the arc flash. Then as a feeder selective, this 103 will make the decision to open that breaker, which is now shown as a green dot. And when the fault is upstream on the bus bar or the circuit breaker itself, then the main target is to open main incomer breaker and upstream breaker, depending on the design. All right, uh, let's move on to connectivity. Connectivity, which in, in this case means a Modbus connection to the outer world. A few words about the S254, our alarm and indication unit, alarm annunciator. It's very flexible. The mimic, the, the relay itself, it's very multi-use system and here is just one example how the setup can be made. First of all, a connection with the Activate software to S254. Then by selecting tools, from tools you select communication and from communication you select Modbus Gateway. Uh, then from the Modbus Gateway you can you can uh, make a first, first, uh, 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 first uh, settings to connect AQ103. Here is just a, a screenshot from the manual. Uh, this is a 103's uh, uh, registers. And uh, in this practice, we want to use register 2, 40002, uh, which is sensor activations and uh, I will explain it later. Okay, so this was the first step. Tools, communication, Modbus gateway. Then we jump over this one and go the next step. We can add slave units to gateway list. Left side you can see slave 1, slave 2, slave 3, slave 4. And uh, in this one system we could have uh, 16 units which means 16 slaves. Uh, in this practice, uh, we are following signal bits. We want to know if the sensor is active or not. And we want to send alarm to the display. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, from this uh, page, from this gateway list, uh, we select the interval, reading interval. In this case, it's one second. We select Modbus RTU as it is RTU. And uh, uh, if you remember, I said that the first address is always 20, from 20 to 35. So let's say that this one is in use now. We have all the settings off here, which means that this unit is 20. 
and we can select that address, Modbus address 20. And then we can of course change the baud rates and uh, what the, these settings here works. And uh, you can select identical settings done in this page. Next page, we can select holding registers. Tap the holding registers and then uh, start data address in this case is 2. And that was uh, selected from the manual. Start data address 2. And um, yeah, it's a single bit what we are following and uh, it's a virtual input type what we are what we want to have. We can also add a descriptions like a sensor one or whatever we would like to show. Then more Modbus settings, tools and 250 logic editor. We can assign imported bit signal to logical output one to one. And in this case, we go back one slide here. Uh, this is now virtual input one. Virtual input one equals to important, imported bit signal one. And in, in this case, that equals to logical output one. We will use this logical output to several different uh, time. We, we will use it to several uh, re different uh, reasons. And uh, just, to, just to give an idea that we can uh, multiply these imported bit inputs, uh, signals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, and just a uh, one-to-one -one copy that to logical output. Quite simple. In here is an example how to use the logical output. We can use the logical output, we can open from the control, we can open device I.O., alarm settings, and for example, alarms 1 to 16. And so on, we can assign these logical outputs to alarms 1, 2, and so on. In this case, logical output 1 is assigned to alarm 1, and that alarm will be shown on the display on top left corner, which is always alarm 1. You can also add many conditions. You can add many conditions, uh, different colors and so on. Uh, in this case, sensor activation is red. If the S254 is reset, it acknowledged the uh, activation, but the sensor is still active, then it's yellow. Just also to give an idea of the flexibility. This kind of alarm display, alarm annunciator, has been, uh, market has required something like this unit many, many years. And um, now, now we have a nice product to support, support uh, also other, other type of use than AQ100, but for this AQ103 it's also perfect. Uh, then, uh, Flexible mimic setting. Uh, this flexible mimic setting, uh, for example, uh, in this project, we will have a, uh, we, we had a real project recently and a customer sent us the PDF file. And uh, the PDF file con includes a single line diagram. So, we actually just convert that to PNC file and we use that as a background of the Mimic. And it looks very good. So uh, what we can do, we, we, went, we can do from the carousel designer, we can do a different type of Mimics. Uh, in this case, we, we can uh, change, uh, we selected alarm tab. And from the alarm tab, we can select different type of colors. For example, these red and yellow colors. And uh, 
by adding this background mimic, what I said a minute ago, uh, we add item by right click this uh, mimic screen, right click add item and you can import any PNG file. But in this case we used the PDF file and uh, it was actually quite uh, quite uh, amazing how how easy it is to use. Easy to adjust uh, to fit the screen. And then after this we wanted to also show different sensors, where the sensors are located, <coughs> sensor numbers, and if there's a flash, if the sensor has activated or not. And how we did that? We we, we use the same logic output like earlier. We add another image called sensor. It can be an, any name, but uh, in this case, uh, let's say that it's called sensor. Uh, and it's PNC file. And then we set up that logical output one when the value is zero. Then we are showing the sensor image. And if the value is 1, we add another image called flash. When the value is 1, same logical output again. Logical output 1, when it's true, 1, then we will show that there is arc fault. That's, that's all. That's all. Uh, now we will show short video of the first installation. Thank you and see you next time. Bye bye. My name is Mikko Maninen, product manager of Arclass Products. Welcome to Cortesjärvi Substations uh, 
This is a first installation for AQ103 R Plus protection relay and also Modbus communication to S254 alarm enunciator. Now I will walk you through the commissioning. Welcome. Speed of life. 